Okay guys, in this video I will discuss about the zero force member and throughout this video we will try to find out whether really the zero force members are required for any structure or not. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so at the very start I am assuming that you have no idea about the zero force member and you are a beginner in that case uh, I'm just going to recap about the zero force member concept so what is the basic concept about the zero force member zero force member this concept is only valid for truss okay any steel truss this is valid okay the truss may be also formed from wood it doesn't matter but the structure should be a truss okay and why this is zero force member you know that each and every member of any truss simply carries some axial force okay only axial force no bending or any other type of force the truss member only carry axial force and if there is no axial force in any member here just like this one in that case these members are known as zero force member now why there is no such forces in these two member simply if you simply cut this joint C and analyze this you can see here that if there is any force FCB and FCD there is no such external load with which this internal load actually uh, equilibrium itself so if there is no external force in any joint in that case the members which creates the joint carries zero force okay it doesn't matter whether it is a 90 degree angle or whether it is any angle let's say theta simply they carry zero force if there is any external load equals with zero clear and there is another criteria where you may find or you may encounter zero force member that is let's say you have a joint where there is three member one two and three okay but two of them are collinear just like this one they are collinear in that case also if there is no external load in that case the third member is always a zero force member here okay clear so now i think it is clear to you how to find zero force member and why the zero force member actually carry the zero force okay so you have got the idea about zero force member now the basic question at least i encounter this question during my student life if there is no force or if this member doesn't carry any load then why they are provided in any structure okay well here you can see that this is a simply transmission tower okay and here this is a zero force member this is a zero force this is a zero force member so my question was that during my student life of course that why this member has been provided they really do not carry any load also here you can see that in this joint h these two members carry zero force also this is the zero force member this is the zero force member so in this particular truss you have four zero force member then why you are supposed to spend any money on these four member not only that in this roof truss also you can see that this is a zero force member so why you have to provide this simply ignore this one no this is not the case okay so if you spend something here you are actually saving somewhere else how well try to understand let's say you do not have this member in that case definitely whenever there is any vertical load acting like this this particular member is under the action of compressive force okay so under the compressive force this member try to buckle like this okay so this is the vertical load here is the reaction here is the reaction so under the compressive force this particular member is trying to buckle like this okay so you have to design this particular member considering the effective length l from e 
to C. Okay, so this is joint C. So in that case, you have to design to design this member. You will go to the steel table and there, based on the KLY R ratio or the slenderness ratio, where KL is the effective length. In this case, this is L. Okay, and R is the radius of rod gyration. You will get some value, and based on that value and some grade of steel, you will find a yield stress. So here you can see, if you increase the value of the slenderness ratio, the yield stress on the member decrease, or you can say, if the length is shorter of any buckled member, in that case the yield stress is high and if the stress is high in that case the sectional requirement is less so basically by providing a single zero force member you are saving a lot of sectional material on these two member so basically you are saving or you can say you are uh, designing an economical structure Okay, the same is also valid for this transmission tower also. Under the action of compressive uh, vertical load like this or like this, this member try to buckle like this, this is DB and due to this huge effective length, you need to provide a large section because due to this huge effective length, the KL up by R ratio is high. Okay. In that case, you can see that the yield stress is very less. So, if the yield stress is very less, in that case, the sectional requirement is high. Okay, that is why you have simply put this zero force member and then you have reduced the effective length just like this. Okay, so this is one aspect or one use of zero force member. There is another use of zero force member. What's that? Okay, so the zero force member are not actually zero force member. Why? Let's say in your family, uh, let's say you have two brother. You are two brother. Okay, and your uh, big brother is let's say employed, but you are not officially employed. Okay. That doesn't mean that you don't do any job in your family. Maybe you are involved with some uh, household activity, okay? Or maybe let's say you are taking care of your old parents. So you are also employed unofficially to some extent, okay? So how this is valid for a structure? Now here you can see in this truss, in this point, there is no such external load. That is why these two members are zero force member but let's say uh, there is a certain cases where in this point there is some nominal load in that scenario what are you thinking of course this particular member is carrying the load in that case this is not a zero force member so the zero force member concept is only valid for a particular load case it is not universally valid okay maybe due to some lateral load there is no vertical load at joint t but in some uh, gravity load combination maybe there is a nominal load here in that case this is not a zero force member it is not so clear so now i think it is clear to you whether the zero force member are really zero Okay, so if you like this video, don't forget to share it.